This is my basic oral surgery setup. I do this for all of my oral surgery cases. This is pretty much what I use on 95% of everything that I do in the office. I'm gonna go through this instrumentation with you and just explain to you the process and how we set this up. So the first thing is Minnesota Retractor. I use the Minnesota Retractor in lieu of a mirror. I don't even have a mirror on the tray. We do have some of those peel packed and separate to the tray itself. And I'll pull those out occasionally if I need them. This is a silicone needle recapping device. I use this one, it works pretty handy and we keep that on the tray to help prevent needle sticks. The next thing is the anesthetic syringe. Anesthetic syringe, uh, we will pull the needles and the cartridges uh, and use those off the tray. Woodson elevator. I like a Woodson. It's got a fine tip on it. And so I can get in there, this little spear part, and I use it to reflect papillae. Uh, and it also has the discoid part that I use as a curette a lot of times to get out granulation tissue from the extraction site once the tooth is removed. So that is one of the first instruments that I use. Uh, nine molt elevator, another one, similar setup. It has a spear type on one end and the beaver tail on the other. And I use this to reflect soft tissue and retract soft tissue. You can even see, uh, possibly see some of the marks of the burrs that have hit this where I was using it as a retractor. Russian forceps. If you don't use Russian forceps, I think this is a must have in my opinion. This is something that I use to grasp teeth when I'm ready to remove them from the oral cavity. I don't use hemostats and I don't use cotton pliers. They're just not adequate in my opinion. But you can see here that these have serrations on the uh, tips and it's really good for grasping teeth. Forceps, I do have a set of curved hemostats. Um, these hemostats I use to remove granulation tissue and Occasionally, you'll get a root tip or a fragment of the tooth that you can pick up with this easier than the Russian forceps. Cotton pliers. Cotton pliers, again, used to pick up finer particles of tooth or bone. Also use this to pack hemostatic gauze in the extraction site after I complete the extraction. So these are pretty handy, and I use these a lot. The two instruments for extraction that I do have on the tray, I use a small elevator, a straight elevator, uh, this is a 301, and then a uh, 34 elevator, which is a little larger. So I have two straight elevators on all of my basic setups. The majority of what I do in extractions, I can do with those two straight elevators with the assistance of an, a force up a now, uh, every now and then. We keep a curette on the table, and this is a small curette. I'm not sure the ex exact number, uh, but there's a small curette that we use for, again, removing granulation tissue. A Selden retractor, the, my assistants will use this to hold back the tongue and hold back the tissue flap occasionally uh, to help me get good visualization of the tooth. A double-ended bone file, large and small ends, to smooth the extraction site. Interceptal bone or maybe the buccal or lingual aspects to help reduce any uh, sharp areas on the extraction site. Of course, you have your basic suction tubing. We use a Fraser tip connection on ours. We have a Yanker tip connection as well for evacuating the oral cavity after irrigation. A couple other extra things here. I put two bite blocks on here. We use child bite blocks. Those tend to work pretty well for me. Uh, it gives me enough access. I put them posteriorly. I, I put two on the tray because most of this is used for my third molar setup. So when the patient's sedated, we'll switch those out right and left as, as needed. A uh, couple other key things here. Of course, you can see the sterilization indicator uh, on the tray. We'll throw on a handful of four by four gauze. I don't use two by two gauze. I use four by four gauze. Uh, I think the small two by twos are a little too risky to get pushed back in the airway. And then this is a sea sponge. This is what we use as a throat screen or a throat shield. Uh, if you've not used a sea sponge or you're not familiar with that, that is something you definitely should check into. They're very inexpensive and they've saved my bacon a few times with tooth getting out of the uh, Russian forceps and headed down the airway. Uh, so definitely something to look into. 
Uh, the last couple items, Dean scissors. I like Dean scissors. They're curved. They have sharp tips. I will uh, use these for blunt dissection when I'm laying a flap. Uh, and then hemis or needle drivers, uh, small tip needle drivers. Some people like the Castro Vallejo. I don't like those that much because they're a little too uh, finer uh, use for me. I like the uh, heavier set of needle drivers in my case. Uh, as you see, this is my basic setup. This is not right. This is not wrong. This is just what I do. It's what I'm used to. It's what I'm comfortable with. It's what I've been doing for years. And you will find, a, a, as you do more and more oil surgery, you're going to find your setup that meets what you're looking for. You may have a completely different setup than I have, and that's okay. It's not wrong. It's not right. It's different. And you will find instruments that work better in your hands than others, as I have done in my career. So this is the basic setup, and we're going to put together a checklist there for you to just be able to go through the list and check those off, and this be easy access for you to uh, use to set up your own trays. You can hand those off to your surgical assistants and they can do that for you. And then it'll just be a checklist. And then you can also use the image here as a go by if you want and you're starting from scratch.